Hello everyone, this is your first edition of Sitting at the Pub with Owen O'Neill from Phoenix Pro Wrestling, up here at Shenanigans Sports Pub. I'm about to have a nice sit-down interview with our 2012 Chase for the Chalice winner, Koma Clayton. And Miss Ball, he gets here, I'm going to sip on a pint, so whenever Koma gets here, we'll start the interview. And uh, look at that, he's on his way in already. Mr. Clayton, welcome. I'd just like to thank you for coming out to sit down and have a chat with me. I know you're usually a man of few words, more action in the ring than anything. Uh, that, that's definitely been your statement over the years. I want to give you a huge congratulations on the chalice. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's the first prize the Grandmaster has really awarded in Phoenix Pro Wrestling. So this is very special. It's a once a year tournament. And that, that's, uh, I, I gotta hand it to you. You, you tore through Manchild, and another very large man, bigger than you. Not many men can say that. Then you had a wonderful match with Shane Malice. I know you two seem to get along pretty well. Good match. And then you had that brutal match with, with James Ford, the Red River Rebel. And before that, he, he just bludgeoned you with a chair for that, that signing, and that, that was just brutal. But, and before we talk a little bit more about the tournament, I, I'd like to get your, your thoughts on Friday the 13th. Um, don't know if you have trigodescophobia or not, the fear of Friday the 13th. But that's, that's fixing to be a huge event. I know you're going to be there, a lot of other matches going on. I, but I'd really like to get your thoughts on the Manchild on Akiba, a mask for match, mask for mask match coming up on Friday the 13th. What are your, what's your opinion on that? I know you had the mask, the, the match with Manchild. I Honestly, I, I do I do feel bad for Akiba. Uh, Manchild's a tough competitor. He um, he carries that large mass of him fairly well, and uh, I think Akiba has a lot cut out for him. Yeah. What What do you think? Have you seen uh, Akiba's thoughts that he that he put out there about Manchild's mask being evil? Do you really think that's possible hey, for a mask? To change a man? It could be. That, I mean, that's why. Why do they wear the mask? Why, I mean, that's a why, darn good you know question. what I mean? If 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 the mask didn't aid in their wrestling ability or make them a different person, right. then why wear it? Right. What do you think of of Manchild's association with AC Norway? Do you think that is a result of the mask? Do you think that came about beforehand or after? I think Manchild needs to get away from AC Norway. Well, I think a lot of us feel a lot of people should get away from AC Norway. But, he, you know, he and I have a history, and we've, we've got that business past, so I've, I've always respected him on that matter, um, regardless of what he does around the ring. Um, he is a good business mind, so, you know, he's, he's probably acquired the man-child as, as, as a business associate more than anything, just because he knows the guy's a winner. He needs protection, pretty much. Well, that, too. He knows man-child will protect him. Man-child is that one is of the biggest guys on the roster. Yes. Obviously... Bigger than me, but not big enough to keep me down. That, absolutely right. So, absolutely right. AC Norway does need protection. Yeah, I, I could see that. He's got to keep that white suit clean. You know, yeah. he needs a little help doing that. But back, back to the tournament. What was it like when, when you, you found out you were selected? It was an honor. It was an yeah. honor to know that there was only eight people selected and I was one of them. It was an honor. And then when you found out who your first match was going to be against, what did you mm. feel about that? I was kind of a little scared. No, yeah? Was... You, you scared? A little bit. Of all people. A, a little bit. Knowing that Manchild is who he is and with the masks that he has, kind of a little little worried. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, hit the gym a little harder, drank a little more Red Bull, you know. You run on that stuff. Oh, definitely. You may drink as much Red Bull as I drink Guinness and whiskey. Maybe. 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 But then you won the match against Manchild. With the coma clutch. With the coma clutch. Yes. You put him to sleep, the big man, in the middle of the ring, and then you face Shane Malice. What was it like? Shane is always, Shane is always a great person to step in the ring with. He always... He always makes you go to that next level, right? To to know that you have to beat him, to know that you to know that you can beat Chain Malice. You always have to go to that next level. Take your take your wrestling ability to the next step, because if you don't, he's just gonna crush you. Do you think typically being a tag team wrestler put him at a disadvantage in the tournament? No, no. Not with Shane. Maybe with somebody else, it could have, 
but not with Shane. No. I know he's got a good history as a singles wrestler also. That was, that was an amazing match. I had the honor of sitting there on commentary for that match. And later that afternoon, you had, you had the contract signing. Otis and, and, and James Ford were trying to provoke you to just give up the chalice and not even have the match. Yep. Had, had that thought even crossed your mind? No. Definitely not. I got through, I got through Man Child and Chain. Jimmy Ford wasn't. He, he was there, but I wasn't. I was ready to face him. When you put your name to the paper there, out of nowhere, did, did you even expect him to hit you with a chair like that? Um, no. No, not, not from him, no. I didn't expect it, but it happened. So Yeah. And then you had that, that crazy match um, with, with, with the hurt shoulder later that night. The, the, the doctor Which I'm you, still suffering from a little bit. That's what I was going to ask you. If you're still bit. suffering from that, yeah, did, did the bit. doctor give any indication of what was wrong? Were you just bruised or, or did you actually have some injury to it? He wasn't sure. I didn't really let him look at it because <laughs> I didn't want him to say, oh, well, you maybe shouldn't wrestle. I didn't even want that thought in my head. I knew I was hurt. I knew I was in pain. Yeah. But you just had him tape it up and, and get back out there. Yep. Um, that was an amazing match. Um, back and forth the entire match between the two of you. Uh, he got out of the coma clutch once. That doesn't happen too often. No, not very often. Not very often. But, eh, I, I beat him with it. That's right, you did. You certainly did. Um, I have to ask you, did it surprise you when you had the chalice and he came back in the ring with that bottle of Jack Daniels from, from Cousin Otis? Yes. I was expecting to get jumped and to get the Jack poured all over me with the Otis laugh. I was expecting that. It really shocked me to see Ford come up and show some respect. A little bit of a sign of respect. I think we were all expecting typical Red River Rebel tactics yes, there. definitely. You know, and he poured the Jack straight, in, straight into this beautiful chalice. I hope it, hope it didn't tarnish it. No, no, I, I, I made sure I spit chime yeah. it. And you who typically drinks Red Bull even took a big swig of that Jack Daniels. Oh yeah, and it was nasty. Down. And then what the, the, the last thing I'd like to ask is, is, what emotion did it bring to you when you stepped out of the ring with the chalice and the entire Phoenix Pro locker room emptied to congratulate you with chance of coma? It was great. It was honestly almost as great as watching my kids be born. Wow, that, I think that says it all. Honestly, almost, almost not quite. I, I can understand that. Ha having a wee one of my own, I, I can I mean, understand that. That, 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 is, that is amazing, but having the locker room empty come out whenever I won the chalice was very respectful and very awesome. That states a lot about what this means. There's not very many nameplates on the front of this, no. but yours and actually, is I the first. Think Mine's the first. That is the first. Yep. And that that's a tradition that will continue. Um, now you've got the chalice. What what are your plans now in Phoenix Pro? The sky's the limit. Yeah. The sky's the limit. Um. Whatever happens, happens. I mean, if I get a shot at the belts, then I get a shot at the belts. That's another thing. What what do you think about that? The Grandmaster has not, other than the tournament, has not a, awarded a title yet to anyone. It's just, I'm honestly speechless. Like, I'm, I, there's just so many things I'd like to say about being the first annual Chalice winner. Yeah. It's just amazing. Does it what, a, what a gift. Does it blow your mind, though? You, you've got the first gift, but there, nobody knows what the Grandmaster is going to bring next. No. He's that's, a that's, quite a mysterious man. He just hands out scrolls to people and usually get them from them crazy guys in the woods. And that's why the sky's the limit. He's got a vision, and nobody knows what it is. Well, he's, he must have a heck of a vision to put together a tournament for a chalice um, with the men that he selected. You came out on top as the first. So, Coma, again, I congratulate you. Thank you. Thanks for sitting in the pub with Owen O'Neill. Sure. Hopefully, you do big things, and we'll be doing this again. Yep. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you. Remember, drink up.